One of the most important assets in a business is its data. But as an IT service provider, how can you ensure that staff with higher privileges aren't accessing such resources when they're not supposed to? More importantly, how can you gain confidence that if such access was ever required, that you can monitor and report on exactly who's done so? In today's episode, we're going to look more closely at file access auditing in an effort to address this and reduce your overall business risk as it relates to information assurance on the client networks that you manage. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Data, the show that takes a mystery out of information security management for IT service providers. I'm your host, Dana Epp. Today, I want to cover one of the most important things that you are responsible for as a trusted advisor to your clients' networks. And that's about information assurance. Well, more to the point, it's about how you can put in controls to know who is accessing what information at any given time. And that is vitally important when you consider how you have to defer trust to staff across all the businesses that you take care of. I mean, think about it for a second. Your staff have access to the most critical information assets to your client's business. One misstep, and you can be legally liable for information disclosure incidents, or even far worse with information theft or destruction, if it's on purpose or not. So it becomes your responsibility to know with a level of certainty who is accessing such information, when, and why. And this is where file access auditing comes in. Before you can really get started in auditing file access, you have to understand what you want to monitor. The best way to do this is to work with your clients to build an asset catalog, which documents what information is important, who is ultimately responsible for it, and who may need access to it. Only then can you classify its sensitivity, assign appropriate security permissions, and determine who in your own organization should have access to it. This tends to be different with each and every client and the data that they own. However, common things to consider include who and what software may need access to read and write to this information resource, and who may have authority to back up and restore it in case of failure or disaster recovery. The good news is, once you've done that, it becomes easy to audit file access through the use of audit policies built right into Windows Server. So let's talk about how you can enable file access auditing. Like in the last episode on account auditing, it's as easy to enable audit policies using Microsoft's Audit Pol tool that's included in Windows. It allows you to quickly query the audit subsystem to see what's set, and can allow you to modify these policies according to your own needs. Let me show you how that works. Open up a command window with elevated privileges and run the Audit Pol executable from the command line. By running the simple command Audit Pol slash get slash category object access, you can see what subcategories you can report on and what the current settings are. The subcategory we are interested in is file system. By enabling that, we can determine when users create, access, modify, or delete objects like files and folders that we're auditing for. If you want to modify an existing policy, you simply use the slash set argument to toggle the success flag to watch for change events. If you'd like to also audit when someone has failed to access a critical file or folder, you can also set the failure flag to accomplish this. If you'd like to learn more about how Audit Paul works, send me a tweet and I can provide you with some TechNet links that can help you out. Once the audit policy is enabled, you can selectively determine what file access privileges you want to audit for and on whom by selecting the Audit tab under Security in the properties of that file or folder. You can watch when files are created, modified or deleted, or get as fine-grained as to tell when permissions have changed or when someone else has taken ownership of the information assets. Now that you've set the file access auditing to meet your needs, let's take a look at how you can evaluate that it's working correctly. Like most audit controls in Windows, file access auditing is driven by a set of event IDs. The primary one that you want to watch for on Windows Server 2008 is the security event ID of 4663, which denotes that an attempt was made to access a resource. You can look inside the event to see what information asset was accessed and by whom, and look at the Access Request Information section to determine if it was a read, write, or delete event. In our IT automation systems, we can monitor for these events and immediately alert the appropriate staff to look into this if sensitive resources are being accessed without appropriate permission. 
many of the more sophisticated RMM players out there even offer the ability to trigger the creation of a new service ticket, so someone with authority can review the incident right away. In many cases, you can take action within minutes and catch the party in the act if they're trying to access information assets that they're not supposed to. But what if you haven't invested in automation tools like System Center or Kaseya? No problem. You can just as easily attach a task to an event in Windows Server and have the system automatically send you an email or run a program that could alert you to what's going on. Here at the office, we execute a session recording if such file audit events are triggered on sensitive files, recording the user's actions as they occur so that we can later look at them during forensic analysis. And here's a bonus tip for you. Consider placing irresistibly named files or folders on the systems that you manage that you know no one is supposed to be accessing. Then acting as a honeypot, watch for any access to these little sticky pieces of goodness. Through anomaly detection, you will immediately know if suspicious activity is occurring on these systems where these little honeypots reside. Speaking from experience, on more than a few occasions, we've tripped up unexpected admins and unauthorized users that were nosing around in areas of servers that they have no business accessing. Without these honeypots, we wouldn't have been able to know that, and we wouldn't have been able to take remediation steps to address the issue. Okay, so now we've set up file access auditing and something has alarmed that we need to respond to. Now what? One thing I'd like to point out is that file access auditing is not in itself a security control. It won't stop a user from accessing, modifying, or deleting information assets that's under your protection. However, it can guide you during the monitoring and reporting to ensure that at all times, confidentiality and integrity is being watched out for. And you should be able to generate a historical timeline of file access activity. Combined with previous versions of that file that may be stored in shadow copies or in backups, you should be able to track and recover any and all information. At that point, human heuristics are going to have to come into play, and someone's going to have to determine if the access and changes to the data was acceptable or not. The great news is, with the way that file access auditing works, you have a clear recorded history of the activities and by whom. Combine it with identity assurance protections from the likes of smart cards or two-factor authentication, and you have a clear understanding of who, what, when, and where such access has occurred. Now it's just a matter of investigating why. So there you have it, the basics of file access auditing. Pretty simple, eh? If you have any security concepts that you would like to see covered in a future episode, email us at beyondthedata at scorpionsoft.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Dana app and tweet me your comments, feedbacks, and suggestions. And of course, you can always catch up on the latest episodes and provide feedback on the show's website at beyondthedata.tv. Until next time, remember that security is a process and not a product. You need to look beyond the safeguards and the technology. And you always have to look beyond the data. Thank you.